you said, um, you know, it's at a point that Biden may actually vote for Trump, right? <laughs> Obviously, you're joking when you're saying that, but maybe you're not fully joking. Yesterday, the story comes out, Rob, if you got the clip with Hunter Biden uh, uh, pardon. And, you know, when you see is this the clip of that? It is. This is uh, the president on an interview with Hugh Hewlett. Go for it. Hugh Hewitt. Go for it. Will you pardon Hunter Biden? Uh, I wouldn't take it off the book. See, unlike Joe Biden, despite what they've done to me, where they've gone after me so viciously, despite what, uh, and, and Hunter's a bad boy. There's no question about it. He's been a bad boy. We have to do is see the laptop from hell. But I happen to think it's very bad for the country. I, I was, I think you know this, but most people don't because most people aren't of your talent. Uh, I could have gone after Hillary. I could have gotten Hillary Clinton very easily. And when they said lock her up, whenever they said lock her, you know, they start doing 30,000 people, lock her up, lock her up. What did I do? I always said, take it easy, just relax. We're winning. Take it easy, take it easy. I could have had her put in jail. And I decided I didn't want to do that. I thought it would look terrible if you had the wife of the president of the United States put in jail. I thought it would be very bad if you did that. Rob, you can and pause I it. The phone has got... So a part of this... I mean, I wonder how Joe is watching this. Yeah. Does Joe watch this and say, well, I mean, if Kamala gets elected, Hunter's going to get by, you know, pardoned anyways. Or does, she, does he watch it and say, this, this guy's going to pardon my... And a part of it strategically for President, your father, for, for him to say, we're going to pardon Hunter Biden and that's on the table. That's a big curveball for the opposition. I, I hope he does. Um, honestly, I hope he does. I, I've, I've probably seen legal lawfare unlike anybody else in the history of this country. I'm the most subpoenaed person in the history of this country because they couldn't get to my father through the executive branch. So guess what they did? They came after the guy who ran a company, right? And I I had 111 subpoenas. And these aren't like baby subpoenas, right? These are subpoenas from, you know, the the top senators, top congressmen. Um, They came after us, you know, give us every single email with a comma in it. I mean, literally, they would just copy subpoenas. You'd literally have, you know, the House copying Senate, you know, subpoenas. You'd have AGs and DAs copying Senate subpoenas because they didn't want to do their own work and just... Guys, I'm talking about hundreds of millions of dollars worth of legal fees. Just to try. I'm a guy who's never gotten a speeding ticket. I'm a guy who, you know, you know, no, no problems in my life. No, no bad habits. No, you know, and and it's in, the the legal lawfare. It just as bad as Hunter's been, and he went around the world and he ripped off everything. He sold influences and, and give me a break, right? Finger painting. <laughs> I mean, he's selling these shitty pictures to you know the to Chinese businessmen or whoever the hell it is yeah. for for you know grand. for two hundred grand. I mean, could you possibly imagine? I mean. I literally went to the Supreme Court because a wine bar two miles away from one of our hotels said that we were violating the emoluments laws of the Constitution because they sent somebody into our hotel to buy a glass of wine who was from a different company, a different country, you know, and, and literally, you know, they walk in the front entrance, sit up at the bar, buy a glass of wine, you know, and a wine bar sues us, you know, saying that we're, we're violating the, the emoluments, yet Hunter Biden's going out, it, right? Hotels, which we've been running, by the way, for 50 years you know, a fourth generation in real estate, yet, you know, Hunter Biden's going out and selling, you know, kind of finger art to people. At the same time, we, we can't divulge into this country where we go after, you know, presidential kids, right? When, when you see Barron's room get raided by the FBI, like, stop, guys. This is, it's, it's gone into turmoil. And, you know, Hunter's a bad kid. There's no question about it. The kid's got real problems, right? And, and by the way, the drug side of it, I, I can't tell you how many friends I've, I have that have fallen into, you know, into that world. And you guys, you know, know so many as well. And, you know, th- that side of it breaks my heart. You know, the side of him being kind of a dirtbag in terms of, you know, peddling influence all over the place. You know, hey, you run a great company. You know, you have a website. Well, you know, where, where's Hunter Biden's website? What's he selling? Yeah. Right. And we all know the answer to the question, right? I'm asking rhetorical questions at this point. But, you know, why do you need 50 shell entities? Like, you know, what, what product are you, you know, you're not selling these beautiful hats. You're not selling T-shirts. You're not a media company. You're not selling ads. You know, what the hell are you selling? But Despite that, I, I think we get in a very, very dangerous spot if, if we create a, a kind of a, a precipice where you just go after everybody's children, their wives, their family. What's going to end up actually happening in this country has already happened. You're just not going to have any good candidates because everybody's going to say, I'm not signing up for this crap. It's not worth it, right? So you're going to end up dealing with mediocrity, which is exactly what we're seeing with Kamala Harris. That's the type of people you're going to have running in the United States of, of America. And if that's the country we become, guys, we don't have a chance against these killers like China. I, you know, I, I know the games that these people play you do as well, you know, they are out for one goal and that's to win. They're the George Steinbrenner of, of countries, right? <laughs> they, they are out to win. 
um, and you know, you, you start doing this, you you allow legal lawfare to exist. I mean, look at DOJ going after Elon Musk yesterday because he goes, "Listen, I'm going to give a raffle, you know, one million dollars." You know, DOJ pops up, you know, about three seconds later. It's the same DOJ that sent the number three person from Washington D.C. The number three person, the DOJ went from Washington D.C. into New York City, right, with the sole intent of every single day working on prosecuting Donald Trump and, and racking up as many felonies that they possibly can. Guys, we can't be that country. You know, we're we're no better than Venezuela if we are. You said, "I hope he does." Pardon Hunter Biden. I, I mean, that that's not a lightweight statement right there. That's pretty intense. Would you mind going deeper? Meaning, because you know what it's like. You said you've been subpoenaed more than possibly anybody in the country over a thousand times. Well, how many times did you say? 100 well, 100, 111. Okay, going into Barron's room. But there's also another component. There's the, I'm a bigger person. Yeah. I'm, I have the ability to unite the country. Trump has the ability to almost rewrite his legacy. Yeah. Like, When's the last time a president came back and won again? It was like Grover Cleveland 100 years ago. Yeah. He's about to do something that hasn't been done in 100 years. It's very impressive. But the unifying the divided states of America, I yep. think, is something that he has the capability 100%. to do if he's able to do things like that. So pardoning Hunter Biden would almost be symbolic, saying this is a great way to start my second term. Yeah. Could you go deeper on that, more the emotional component, not just the legal component? I think he's at a point right now. And listen, I say this as a son, but but I really mean it. And I really mean it from my heart. I, I think he's at a point where he's at the precipice of truly being a transformational. He, listen, he was transformational in, in terms of the acts of of you know kind of 20, 2016 to twenty twenty, right? Trade deals, making you know everybody realize we were being ripped off. The the immigration. I mean, so many of the things that he focused on, you know, kind of putting America first. You know, kind of exposing the deep state might be his greatest accomplishment is just exposing kind of the the true corruption. You know, if he wins in 12 days, I really think he'll he'll, have, he'll be on the precipice of going down as truly one of the the greatest, most iconic leaders in American history, if if not the world, right? Guys, they threw everything. Aside from all the things, that, that kind of list I went through, right, trying to uh, try and deplatform him, take his voice, take his you know, freedom of speech, um, you know, impeach him, go after every single person around him, go after his family, you know, put him in jail, everything that they've tried to do. You know, if, if he's able to, to beat that, then beat the mainstream media. Right. Who again, the 92 percent negative coverage of him, you know, one person, maybe one person with 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 me and a few other people around him who have kind of stood on that stage every single day. You know, he beats the media. He beats the deep state. He beats all all the nonsense. Right. And, you know, he beats every effort to, to kind of take him down and he gets back into office and he does what he says. He fixes the economy. He fixes prices. He fixes you know gas prices. He renegotiates trade deals, which absolutely infuriate me because we were getting absolutely bamboozled all around, you know, the world. He, he restores freedom of speech. You know, he does that with Elon because obviously Elon's on a tear about this, but he's, he's right. I mean, listen, guys, this is for a first amendment, right? This isn't, you know, this isn't the 20, you know, this is our first uh, amendment, numero uno. you know, brings religion back to society, allows faith again in, in society. You know, it gets government out of people's lives. Uh, it, you know, does great accomplishments, lands that person on on Mars, right? I mean, keeps us as as the true superpower, in spite of everything that they threw in his face. You know, his his face should be up on Mount Rushmore, right? You gotta and, respect and, that. And, and I'm not I'm not saying that as a son. I'm saying you got you got to respect that. That's one man taking on every institution that's been weaponized against America, and he did it by himself. You know, it, by himself, by himself with the American people. Yeah. You know, who are who are who are pissed off and fed up. Um, I, I think it will cement him as truly one of the most transformative leaders in, in, in the history of this country. I, really mean that. I agree. And by the way, you're talking about Hunter Biden. It, it, it's obvious that there's so many people concerned about Hunter Biden that the, he may not have access to some of the stuff that he likes, that even uh, Theo Vaughn, if you can pull this clip, he was concerned <laughs> about uh, what Hunter may not have access to anymore. Go ahead. Because of the cocaine country. in this country anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that seems like can a crazy back thing from to the say. Again? <laughs> you can't. You can't even do cocaine in this country anymore, you know? <laughs> and that seems like a crazy thing to say. And don't say that. Don't say that. I, but I said it. But, but yeah, but don't say I'm that gonna, anymore. Gonna, the last one I went to, some dude selling a fucking boat at one of them. It's, exactly. And we're like, you you can't do, we're trying to. You say so bad in this country, yeah. you can't buy cocaine <laughs> okay, anymore. Okay, man. Can I ask you no, a question? But, you know, go ahead. But the, the, the yeah. thing with Theo is you got to th – there's something very special about this guy. He's sitting with J.D. J I've not seen Vance laugh like I've that heard, the I've way never, he just did. Yeah. But go ahead. What's well, your question? Th this is the third component to what you always talk about. It's the humanization of people. <sighs> you know, PBD has an, a, a great phrase where, especially with your father, I mean, I can't think of anybody that it's – more pronounced with where when you're young you idolize someone and then 
they go into villainization, demonizing, and then it's humanizing. Yeah. I mean, once you lose your life, you get shot. I mean, Trump is more human than ever, and to err is to human. But Theo does a great job. Like the, the whole cocaine conversation with your dad. Where are you going, Adam? I'm What's just your saying question? the human element. Right. Like you, you asked Trump this exact question, right. basically, and, and Eric kind of touched on that there's this there's this human component that we're seeing with trump i'm going to a, a place people, are you asking i'm not going to do cocaine right now pat it's no, not going to happen is it a question I'm, or is it, are I'm you wanting is, to legalize cocaine and you're asking him a favor yeah, I'm, it's I'm, not going to happen <laughs> it's not going to happen okay, you're going to say if the fr brothers but then i have no I'm more not questions gonna, listen forgive but me for him wanting to take don't this you angle. Think, being late. don't use the podcast as a method of favor to ask the, the man's son okay <laughs> we're going to pause we're humanizing no so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one click right here and if you want to watch the entire podcast Click right here.